Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Follow. 
The worst blindness is the blindness of the heart. The upper hand is better than the lower one. The less which can meet one's needs is better than the more which can call or cause neglectfulness. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya ayuha alladina amanu attaqulla haqqatu katihi wa la ta'mutuna illa wa antum muslimun. Oh, you believe for your lives he should be feared and do not die except in the state of Islam. Kuntum khairu umatin ukridatnal nasi tamununa bil ma'rufi wa tanhauna nil munka wa tusminuna billah. You are the best peoples ever raised up for mankind, joining what is right, forbidding what is wrong, and believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Akula kali hala wa staffullah li walakum. Make honey, you know, they do 
what Allah made for them to do. And the only creature in Allah's creation that has some options, mainly, is you and I. We can make choices. And we gain paradise, or gain the hellfire, or whatever there is in between, although we've been guaranteed one of the two. So, in order to be burdened with those uh, challenges, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the human being the ability to manipulate himself within the environment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. Verily, we have created man to toil and struggle. One of the things uh, uh, Birds have to get up and fly around and find worms. You know, everything that is has something that it was created to do, right? And so here it says, verily we created man to toil and struggle. So a life of ease was not why Allah created the, the human being. Allah created the human being and gave him the ability to alter very few animals can alter their environment. Now the human being can alter his environment so much so that it, you can't recognize it in some cases. From the original creation, you can't erect, they can change it that much. Now they're getting ready to jump into, or they've been into, artificial intelligence. That is artificial intelligence that is uh, that can add faster than the human being can, that can outdo the human being in a lot of things pretty soon, uh, he'll be able to knock the human being over if we don't watch out. You know, if that's what Allah got written for, you know, <laughs> it says in history about uh, what a great piece of history where they, the, the servant had given birth to their master. That's one of the signs in the days of the, in the time. You, you'll see shepherds running around competing with building small, I mean, large buildings, right? If you go to the Middle East, and there they are. Some of the tallest buildings in the world is right over there. Although Europeans might have built them for them, but they built them right on those sand buildings. Anyway, verily we have created man to struggle. Thinketh he that none hath power over him, he can get arrogant as he moves along. Uh, he may say, boastfully, I have squandered wealth in abundance. I think a lot of us have had a chance to say that, man, I was having big money. Or well, I hit the lottery, of course I'm driving a little regular car and I don't want to run, but I, I hit the lottery, we, you know what I mean? This is saying, I had big money, uh, but I squandered it. Thinking he none that beholdeth him. Have we not made for him a pair of eyes and a tongue and a pair of lips? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the ability to see, perceive, understand, and to speak. And with all that, it says, nine is to the part that we want to concentrate on Allah. And we have shown him two highways, not today. We have shown him two highways, but he hath made no haste on the path that is steep. And what will explain to thee the path that is steep is the freeing of the slave or the giving of food on the day of privation to the orphans with claim of relationship or to the injured that down in the dust. Then will he be of those who believe and enjoy patience and constancy, self-restraint, and enjoy deeds of kindness and compassion. Such are the companions of the right hand, and those who reject our signs. They are the unhappy companions of the left hand, and then will, on them will 
be the fire vaulted over and around. We talked about that we wanted to spend just a little time on talking about uh, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after creating us and giving us all this uh, ability and authority to go along with it, he showed us the two highways, Najdaim. Najdaim, they usually construed in Tafsir as two roads, two highways. You know, the road of good, the road of evil. You know, and with the lips, the eyes, and all of what you have, you have the ability to search out, to receive, to perceive, and try to understand which of these two roads exist. Of course now, you got Hidayah, you got, we'll deal with that a little bit later. We have divine guidance that points out the way. And we have Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of all the worlds, that, that put on all of this means of excellence and profession and ways to move. And if you follow that prescription, right, you're going to reach the destiny that Rabbi Alameen hooked up for you. But now, we have Najdain, the two roads, the two highways, right? And how would we use all the gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us? So it goes on to say that we show them the two highways, but he had made no haste on the path that is steep. That is the, the, the basically the high road. So who is this human being that is dodging the high road? He's dodging the, the difficulty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made two highways, right? But one of them contains the road that is steep, the one that has an ascent, right? The, the one that, uh, <laughs> that has an incline to it. You know, like you, when you work out, you got a flat bench, and you can do a lot of weights on that. Then you got an incline. And that incline, if you can do 400 pounds on a flat bench, you probably can't do it for 350 one time on the incline. And the more incline that you've got on it, the less you can do. And, 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 and when you go out and run and do your road work and what have you, The harder you run and the higher that hill is and what have you, the ways of a sick, right? The harder you got to work. And a lot of people, when they want to get in good training, we got trails that we run in Oakland and George Foreman never used them, Charlie Shapes them. All the boxes in Oakland would go up in the hills. I still go there now. I do a little slower. But still, I go up there just remembering how nice these hills are, all the wild animals and whatever, right there in the city of Oakland, except it's in the hilly part. And then when you're doing this, these things, you think about the ways of ascent, the uphill road. See, the uphill road, or the ways of ascent, when you can, you can, the kids in our school, they used to run once or twice just up that hill right there. And they were in super good shape. Just doing two little ups and downs right there on that hill. People that run on the flat road, they get in shape. But people that run in the hills, they be in super shape. Because that uphill road, is going to try you and test you and encourage you to train at a high level because in order to go on that trail or those trails, 
you're going to have to get in super condition. Right? And then life, as we move along in this life, a lot of made two roads for you and I too. One is the uphill road, the incline, the high road, right? And the other may be this, the flat road or the decline. If we want to get into our spiritual, moral, and ethical conditioning, right? We have to improve. We have to get better. So there's a moral road out there. And that moral road is steep and trying. And the longer you stay on that moral, ethical road, you're going to be tried and tested in all kind of ways, right? And on that moral road, uh, the longer you stay on it, the longer the distance, the better condition you, you acquire, and the better you are able to fight moral battles on that road. And remember, we say, you know, Sirat al Mustaqim. Guide us on and to what? The straight path, the right path. And even in some commentary, it talks about the Sirat al Mustaqim is narrow, it's long, right? And it's straight. And as we move along in life, it's difficult. Not to wonder, <laughs> over to this side or the other, right? There it is, straight. And so it's difficult. So those ethics and those morals, the akhlaq of the human being, has to be tried and tested on that road. So that their moral and their ethics are conditioned to the point that when they're tried and they're tested on ethics and on morals, they can do it. They can hang. We'll get ready a few more days next week to encounter Ramadan. Ramadan is a special condition that's made for the human being. And that is a condition where we have to, in that condition, discipline ourselves, ethics and morals and what have you. And we have, by the time that month is over, we have disciplined ourselves. Right? Discipline our physical and our psychic, right? Self to have self-control and self-discipline. And that's what Allah said. That I have written fasting for you that you learn tatakun and self-restraint, self-discipline. So as we move along in this day-to-day -day life, right, we need not only physical training, but we need psychological training, moral training, and ethical training. And that Ramadan is going to give you, it's going to cover all of that because don't nobody know you're not eating, but a lot, right? <laughs> You can come in here with your jaws all dropped down with a full belly. You know, we don't know. Right? Only Allah knows. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that this person is fulfilling the requirements of Ramadan. Right? Okay. So the, the uphill road, the ways of a sit is going to train you and discipline you in all manner of training, ethics, morals. Your belief will be challenged from time to time. And if you go through the proper training, your belief will evolve and you'll get better and more disciplined. And that's why when it talks about the uphill road, uh, when it's talking about Nats Day and the uphill road, that is the ways of ascent. That the way you will improve day after day, week 
after week, month after month, until you become an improved human being. Until you become a better human being. But you have to follow those prescriptions because the last upon what I said, that's what I gave it to you for. That you will be able to get on that road and if you stay on it, what's going to happen? You're going to be faced with things. The miskeen, those are the poor, right? They don't have much. The orphans, the yatim, you're going to encounter them. And at times, they may need your help. Those are conditions that try and set your barometer for what kind of person you're going to become. Because it says on that road, you will be tried and tested. It's going up. It's the ways of ascent, right? It's not a flat, easy road or noise of a decline when you go down the hill, right? And when you start going uphill, all that heavy stuff that you got on, right? All those heavy coats and all them heavy boots and all that, because we used to run into the years ago. We didn't know no better. And so, and all that stuff, you start going to throw that away because the more you're working and striving, right, the heavier that jahiliyyah, that dunya is becoming. So as you move up, you want to discard those physical things. And it's known as hayat uh, dunya uh, the physical things in the, in the material, or the life of this world is technically what it means. Right? So, if you want to move on the uphill road, you will have to learn how to discard your attraction or the gravitational pull of those material things. You have to do it. Because if you want to travel on the road of life that have these ups and downs, right, you're going to have to travel it where you don't have too many of those attachments. Now, I'm talking about being attached to it. I'm not talking about having it. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a good house. You shouldn't have a nice car. You should have all of those things. But the attachment to it is different. Talk about the love of dunya. The, the, the love of it so much that when some yatim or somebody that comes and have a need and they're asking you for some type of assistance, you cannot part with that. Why? You can't part with that. You can't part with it because you are attached to the dunya. al hayat al dunya. So, now this is saying, and Allah gave you a tongue and has shown you two highways, but he had made no haste in what was steep. Not staying those two ways the people haven't had much training on those two ways, right? So they're going to move toward the one that seems basically the easiest. That's a flat road or a decline, right? But that uphill road is the one that tries. And what will explain to thee the path that is steep? What is it? It's the freeing of the slave. The freeing of the, the bondsman, or giving material and food and shelter. And then this is the part to the orphan with claim of relationship and to the indigent down in the dust. Now, most people will tell you from Jahiliya rules don't hang around with them poor niggas. Poor niggas and eat up all your food. They'll run you crazy. No, as people begin to improve their physical lot, everybody in that lot tell them, now them friends you got, them nigga friends, those are bums. 
They're going to get in your way. Right? They're going to get in your way. And the more you stay away from them, the higher you're going to fly. <laughs> The easier it is for you to get up because them, those are niggas and them niggas ain't no good. Or that Chinese or Mexicans, all of them, they're bums. And if you notice in society, the higher you go up, the rare the atmosphere, in other words, is less people, right? So in the wealthy neighborhood, that's a nice little but in the rich, rich, rich neighborhood, there ain't but a few people, right? And out on those islands that some of those super rich buy, it ain't nobody on them islands but the, the sharks, the fish, and the palm trees till they get there, right? So they look at it like this. Make yourself lighter to lift. Don't try to lift up the whole society. Don't try to carry all them bums around with you. Don't try to bring them up too because they crabs in the barrel. You get money, they're going to drag you down. And of course, people kind of act like that mostly, you know. So it ain't hard to believe that one, right? Because everywhere you look, right, that uphill road looks not only uphill, but it looks insane in human terms. Why should I try to drag all them bums that every time they get a chance, they're going to steal my money, right? They're going to try to cloud up the issue. And if I set $100 on the table and I look there and it ain't, but it's $99, I'm going to say, where's the other dollar? I don't know. I ain't seen the name but the one person in the room, right? <laughs> so you begin to say, right? <laughs> I didn't take it. But they'll do that if it's a million dollars on the table. You get a bunch of coons together and somebody will knock over a dime, 10 cents. You say, man, we got a dime missing here. I just put it there so the testers see if we can go on and get this rest of this, these millions. No, I don't know. Nobody knows. One dime. They'll do that. But for you, if you want to reach the level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then guided you to through this Quran, it's not staying. You're going to take the what? The uphill road. Right? You're going to take the incline. And that's the road that's what? It's the road that's steep. But let me move on a little bit. And why is it steep? Because you're going to give or you're going to help aid and assist people that there's no guarantee of return. The poor, the needy, the one with their face down in the dust. That's what, it is. That's what the Quran is referring to. When you give to them, you ain't got no guarantee of return. In fact, the closest thing you got is a guarantee that they'll probably be back next week, right, for more help. But remember, Allah made us to be challenged and tried. And for the stingy human being, this is the highest level of challenge, right? To be tried with his goods, his services, his wealth, and his attention. I will spend some of my time thinking about the people and their betterment. I will use some of my wealth to help my relatives, uh, my friends, and those people uh, elevate themselves. And the dunya said, don't do that. Leave them niggas alone. They broke down and they'll be forever broke. And if you give one of them a million dollars, you get that nigga three weeks and he'll be broke again. Right? You know, like people that win the lotteries, right? They win the lotteries. And if they don't have a system on the lottery where you're going to give you 100000 this week and so on, they will be broke very soon, right? It don't make no difference what the number is, right? Tell the truth. 
This Negro won $3 million. And you would wonder, well, how could somebody go broke in five or six months with that much money? How is it possible? It's possible. Fact is easy. And what else? It's common. Tell the truth. You know anybody hit the number and they stayed up? You know? 15% stay up. The rest be broke in your time. If you're 85 years old, they going to go broke before you pass away. Yeah, you're 85. Anyway, let's move on. So this up, up here wrote Mahama. Mahama comes from uh, technically the Rahman, Rahim, Rahama. So Marhama is just another word. Uh, then will he be of those who believe and join patience, constancy, self-restraint, and enjoin deeds of kindness and compassion. Marhama, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, right? Rahama. It, technically, it's the same word for womb. Arham. Why? Because in the womb, the, the, the baby is cared for, the baby gets everything, just kick it back, right? And, and the kindness and tenderness that Allah gave to the woman, and it's in her womb, right? That's why we open the Quran with Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Rahama, both of them mean the root word. If you look in a dictionary, Marham, Arhama, all of them comes right out of the Quran. It means kindness and tenderness. In the name of Allah, the tender, the merciful, the compassionate. And so, this is what's given us our direction. Then will he be of those who believe and enjoin patience, constancy, <coughs> self-restraint, deeds of compassion. This is the The other thing we want to remember is uh, Aja, or wages. But doing this good that we're talking about, or oh, we'll get to talking about in a minute, uh, you know, if you want to do a good deed, you get a reward for that good deed, whether you do it or not. And if you do the good deed, you get more. You know, you may get ten hundreds, you know. There's 700, like planting, you know, corn. But then there's Hadith, I don't know how strong they are, some. You go to Hajj and you make this do and you get 50,000, you know, rewards. And I mean, there's, it's unbelievable, you know, what some of the keepers of Hadith have, uh, you know, it, but you, if you want to build a house for the poor and the needy, and you want to do that, don't you know, you get the reward for that whether you do it or not. And then if you do it, all these other rewards come behind it. And I, I wanted to mention that because we have, uh, we're in another stage of our community. And there's things that we want to do, and mainly they're not technically for ourselves. It's for those who are down in the dust, you know, like we talked about. If you've been coming to some of our classes, you would know that we've been thinking about and preparing for what they call homeless shelters and all of that. Not homeless shelters that the government support, but homeless shelters that we support. Not halfway houses that the government support, but the ones that we support ourselves. Because so far, we've never taken 
not one dime from the government. And a lot of my big preacher friends, especially in California, they said, man, I got a little thing, we're going to get big money. I said, well, where are you going to get it from? Well, we're going to get this program the government got, and I'm going to get you some too. I said, I don't want it. You don't want what? I said, I don't want no government money. And they look at you and they be, they be thinking, but you got a church, a bulls of church down there, man. That's a gold mine. This is what they look at. Right? And a lot of preachers around here feel the same way. They want to get on that religious government program. Well, if the government do the program, the government going to get all the rewards. And you ain't going to get nothing. <laughs> Probably in I don't know. But what we want to do we want to do it because the Quran has described this reality as the uphill road. And since we did, well, maybe not do it now, we tried a little running them trails in the park, but that was years ago when we used to run them trails up in the hills with heavy iron weight, you know, five pounds of each hand, 10 pounds, Sweat gear on and make you sweat. When you finish, you could pour out a, a, a not a gallon of water, but a loose of good quart. You just pour it out every time you finish. And we know the value of the uphill road in training and conditioning. So if you want to train for heaven, you want to train for paradise, right? You want to train for the real good life. That's the road to train on, the uphill road. That's where you do your road work. You get on that boy and you're going to be all right. But it's a road of kindness. Marhama. It's, it's a road where you're trying to free the people in bondage. It's a road where if there's somebody that everybody else want to avoid, what they face down in the dust, those are the people you want to help rescue and maintain. And this is the kind of future that uh, what we want to do. We ain't got time to sit around and moan and cry about the little old dumb stuff the government do around here. If we let them do that, we would be, we might as well surrender to the dummies downtown, right? We might as well surrender to the crackpots and the CIA and the FBI. No. We're going to surrender to the Quran. <laughs> and it, it shows you what you do. You want to get right with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get on the, the uphill road. That road is narrow. That road is steep. And that road has you huffing and puffing. The higher you get, the higher you get. The air gets thin up there. Boy, but you being in condition, right? <coughs> you be training. You ain't going to carry nothing extra with you. Why? Because you're going to run it off of you while you're on the uphill road. That road is narrow, that road is steep, and you're going to steep, and you're going to do inclines. You want to put stuff up on your chest, get on that bench and do inclines, right? <laughs> and them inclines have you ready. The fat bench is good for you, but you want to get tight, right? You want your stuff sticking up under your neck, which you don't do now, but it is one time it did. I mean, it's all a big deal, you know. You want to be a senior citizen. Everybody, hopefully, sooner or later. So don't worry about that. Because this stuff up here and this stuff up here begins to outweigh that by leaps and bounds. Right? The heart, the mind, right, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a person, that's going to be, that's the monster. The one that they're not even concerned about. They said, well, we want to build up the mind, make you how to get money, how to do this, and how to da 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 da. That ain't nothing. You know, there's a lump of body, a lump in the, the, the body, the, the flesh, you know. If that's right, the whole body is right, or the whole person is right. You know, and had he said, as a polish for everything, right? And a 
polish for the heart is the remembrance of Allah. That's what it is. So I'll move toward a close hill if you have happy. See what we can scare up right quick. It's reported on the authority of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu that the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said uh, and told that Musa, son of Imran, <coughs> once asked, Oh my Lord, he's asking Allah, who is the most honorable of your servants in thy sight? Who is the most honorable? Service in your sight that you see of his arm. He replied, He who pardons in spite of having power is a big. <laughs> you read this first because it's probably the biggest one. When you pardon people, human beings, when you have acquired power over them. <laughs> when you done got ten times as big as them. When you're the chief, when you're the administrator, you're administrating uh, on Allah's behalf good services, wealth, power, and you in control. The biggest one <laughs> is what I need to say. And he replied, he who pardons in spite of having power. There's a few hadith like this. You want to be big? This is the first step. How are you going to treat people when you have power? And by the way, they haven't treated you that well. <laughs> right? Because they're human beings. Human beings have to get that Special guy, Dina Sirat al Mustaqim, right? The Sirat, the straight way, the perfect way. But you have to ask, so Allah guide me on and to the straight way. And keep me on that straight way. And only Rabbi Alameen, right, can do that. Because Rabbil Alameen created you, structured you, organized you, right? And he knows the way that you need and what you need to get on and what you needed to arrive at your destination because he made you. And not only did he made you, he made the means for you to arrive at your excellent or perfect destination. That's what Islam is all about. That's what Islam is all about. Lord of what? All the world. The ones that you see and the ones that you don't see. Right? They talk about other dimensions and the fifth dimensions. It may be a hundred thousand dimensions. You don't know. All you see is couple of little dimensions of stuff and trees and other Negroes running around. That's all you see. You think that's all exists? The Hadith say that there's 40,000 dimensions. Now, you know, that just means a lot. It don't mean that you sit there and count the 40,000. You find I done discovered six dimensions, you know, or something like that. It ain't nothing. There's still many more. When the Hadith say to forgive your brother uh, 40 times a day or 70 times a day or something like that, it means forgive him a lot. It don't mean that you sit there, I just forgive that nigga seven times. You got it. just a few more that would be it to him. Right? <laughs> it don't mean that. It means a lot. Okay. It is narrated on the authority of Abu Rida Rani Allah and who that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily Allah does not consider your figures and riches. He rather values your heart and deeds. 
And that's why we're talking a lot more about media intention and heart and spiritual aspects. Abu Ghraib already Allah and who reported that the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Rich is he whose heart is rich. Rich is he whose heart is rich. They don't preach that. You rich if you have money, right? That's right. They don't teach it. But you got a good heart, you you're happy, you yeah, I'm happy as I can be. Well, you rich. Right? How many zillionaires have you seen jumping off bridges, drinking all the whiskey they can get in, chasing all the women or the men up and down the street, and some of them is men chasing other men, women chasing other women, and they ain't nowhere near happy, right? They all going crazier and crazier. If you think it's crazy around here, going out to California. Boy, that's a sad place out there. You ever see all the homeless? The homeless, see the homeless here ain't nothing. You know why? Because it's cold here. It's just, the winter's just going away. Now everybody come on out and lay out. But in California, it's so-called good weather all the time. You ought to see Oakland and LA and those places in California. It's it looks like uh, Soweto and all those places that have corrugated metal here and a little wood here and a little shacky stuff here. And Soweto, when I was there, there's four million people in Soweto. That's the way the shanty towns in LA, City of the Angels, is beginning to look like. San Francisco, they have so much homeless. The city, the streets we used to see, you can drive down those streets for miles, 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 and in shanty town. I mean real shanty towns, old tents and everything, and filth everywhere. Okay, so maybe if we want to get a piece of that, we'll try to help. I mean, what, right? Why not? They're the ones down in the dust. And if we just skip one thing in the line, we didn't might have been any one of us. Isn't that right? Tell the truth. There's a lot of good people out there in the dust, laying in them tents, right? And the government giving you, you know, believe it or not, I'm not on any paperwork from the government, but I got a $1,400 check the other day. From the government. Just in the mail. Here you go. I ain't look, you think I'm lying. I haven't been on no employment thing. The last time I talked to a lady about 25 years ago here at the hospital or somewhere. Uh, when is the last job you had? I said 1966. And then she thought, 1966? I said, yes, I had a job. I worked for a whole year. I was on patrol and I got a penitentiary young guy. I worked for a whole year in 1966. 1966? I said, yeah. What have you been doing? I said, I've been getting by, you know. So I haven't been on none of their paperwork for since whenever 66 was. And they come float me a kite. I said, well, thank y'all very much. Hey, we can use it. What people is wasting throwing away that much money. Right? That's borrowed money. What's gonna happen to you when you need money? What's gonna happen to America? Right? <laughs> the day before it go broke. What's gonna happen when everybody's having runs on the banks and the money's not worth a dime, right? That's what we have to think about. Anyway, whatever happened, we ain't going after the people. We don't wanna be sitting up next to the rich people and all of that. Why? It says, 
move toward those people who are down in the dust, who need real aid and assistance, right? So, tomorrow, it's an ethical proposal, but the philosopher of God loved us so much that he gave us all the stuff, you know, and the will to want to do that. See, that's the thing, <laughs> right? Just the desire to want to do something like that in a world that we live in today is unbelievable, right? You want to do good in a world that haven't showed you no goodness, no kindness, and no thanks, no nothing. Right? That's the kind of world we live in. But we don't do whatever we do because of them. And I'm going to close with this last thing. Back in, must have been 71 or something. I was driving down the street, but my partner was driving. He, you know, we had to limousines and stuff in those days. So it was, the police was beating on a guy on 94th and East 14th, 92nd, something like that. So I told him, stop, man. I got out and uh, going to help the, the brother. <laughs> and then the, the police turned on me and they knew me very well. So I was wearing a big hat and all that. They took the big hat off, told him on the ground. And, jumped up and down and I said, boy, these boys have a problem with niggas with money. Anyway, so then uh, they had me hell like they was hitting me in the stomach and I was younger so it didn't make no difference. And uh, then they slipped up on me with the tear gas, you know, and, you know, give me a little joke to that. And so uh, it wasn't nothing, I'd been in jail five hundred times. Ready, so it wasn't no big deal. But the Negro, when we was in the paddy wagon, the Negro that was drunk and I was trying to help, he looked at me and said, what the hell are you doing in here? He didn't even know. He was so drunk. He didn't know. But see, remember, I didn't do it because of him. I did it because it was injustice. You see what I'm saying? That's what we're talking about now, except on the elevated higher level. We're talking about that the human being can improve to such a level that they can do things above and beyond what's relative to them. Right? They can actually give, and all religions have charity in aiding the poor. The Sermon on the Mount was up to the poor people, right? Blessed are the poor, blessed are the, blah, 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 right? But you don't never see it outside. You don't even hear nobody talk. Even the preacher ain't talking about blessed are the poor. I want to bless those people that came in and they gave, someone I believe was gave 2,000, one gave 5,000. Thank the Lord, somebody gave $50,000 to our homeless program that Dad helped me. I needed a new Cadillac, not a Cadillac, not a bench. And even a mega Rolls Royce uh, that I needed to, <laughs> to, to help me get by. Right? And the more that nigga talk like that, the more money they give him. Isn't that the truth? And a good man would come up and say, well, we want uh, $500 to help Miss Hattie down the street or something. Had it on the street. Shoot. My preacher, if we can get him down there in this, in this Mercedes, Grand 600, I don't even know if they make it, but see, the Negroes in California used to drive Grand 600. You know, the one with two roofs, sunroofs at the top, real long two back seats. Do they still have it? I don't even know if they make them anymore. But those was the Negro cars, boy, in L.A. and San Francisco. That was the only car we rode in. But they were big and long, and they said, that's what a nigga can't get no 600. Ain't nothing I can do, this is the preacher. Because he's worried about getting to hell 
in his little car. And I'll close with this one time. It's a cartoon on the newspaper. And uh, the cartoon was about Ferdinand Marcos. I don't know if you remember him. Ferdinand Marcos was a dictator in the Philippines. And his wife, Amelda Marcos, anybody remember her? That girl had 3,000 what? Man, she, think I'm lying? Tres mil, three thousand pairs of shoes. And that was just what you could see. She, that was the closet that they showed you. And so that was a cartoon that uh, they got up to St. Peter and uh, it was a, it was a, a armored truck outside, you know. One of the angels is telling St. Peter, St. Peter's asking, who is that out there? They said, well, it's uh, Ferdinand Marcos. He's trying to bring his money with him. This is the joke. You know, it's a joke, right? St. Peter, Perry Gates, right? Marcos, dictator of the Philippines, stole all the money, trying to take it with him, and it won't go. You can't get the money into paradise. You can't even get a car in the paradise, right? And you can't get no arrogant, fat-bellied man or woman in the paradise either. They're going to have to be trimmed down by spiritual good deeds. In other words, dear believers, let's all try to get to heaven. And on the way, let's try to make the means of us getting there doing good deeds to the people down in the dust, right? the people that need your help. And now, there's millions of them. You don't even have to look for them. They're all out there everywhere. Everybody that they're avoiding, the rich is avoiding, avoiding they're walking right by you and I. Well, I would seek that refuge from anxiety and grief. We seek that refuge from lack of strength and laziness. We seek that refuge from cowardice and niggardness. We seek that refuge from being overpowered by debt and the oppression of men. All lies suffices for what is lawful, keep from us what is prohibited. With that grace, make us free from one of what is besides. I mean, comment this is about.